Hello and welcome. This is part 1 of a two-part video series. Part 1 is an overview of the Weldon VMUX electrical system. Part 2 will cover network operation, downloader and diagnostic software, and will conclude with system troubleshooting tips. The definition of multiplexing is to send multiple signals over a single communication line. For example, telephone, internet, and cable TV signals can all be sent over a single cable system. VMUX stands for Vehicle Multiplexing. VMUX uses a two-wire, shielded communication cable. The signals are differential mode, monitoring the difference in voltage between the two wires. The cable is twisted pair, which helps eliminate noise from outside sources. The network uses RS-485 serial protocol. Serial communication means that messages are sent one bit at a time over the network. Each complete message contains several bits of information. There is a checksum value at the end of each message, which looks at the sum of all bits. The node will recognize if the checksum is incorrect, and immediately rebroadcast the message. Other nodes will ignore any messages with an incorrect checksum value. VMUX is a complete electrical system, made up of a combination of hardware and software. It is widely used on ambulances and fire trucks, and is also used on military vehicles, buses, RVs, and occasionally on boats. The VMUX system was first developed in 1998 and has a proven track record of reliability since then. Builders enjoy the benefits of the VMUX system. It is easy to customize vehicle features and functions. Labor savings can be realized during installation, because there are fewer wires, splices, and connections. The I.O. nodes are sealed but Weldon recommends mounting nodes with connectors facing downward when possible. This way any water that gets in the connectors, can drain back out. Unused connector pins should also be plugged, to keep them waterproof. The system has built-in diagnostic features, and further troubleshooting can be accomplished using the VMUX diagnostic software. In a conventional, relay-based electrical system, there is a lot of point-to-point -point wiring. There are many connections between switches and the relay box, and many more wires coming from the relay box out to all of the devices. A multiplex system allows the use of electrical zones. Nodes can be placed throughout the vehicle, resulting in shorter wire runs to devices. Only the communication cable is needed to connect all the nodes together. Fewer connections results in higher reliability. The VMUX system is a peer-to-peer -peer network, meaning that each node has its own configuration and control. Each node communicates with all other nodes in the network. If one node were to stop working, the remaining nodes will continue to operate. There can be up to 32 nodes in the network. The VMUX nodes feature solid-state outputs, which have no moving parts. The outputs can be set to flash, and the standard flash patterns are 80 and 160 flashes per minute. The flash patterns can be synchronized throughout the network, and there is an A-B pattern for wigwag flashing. Custom flash patterns can also be created by the builder. Some outputs can provide a variable output level using pulse width modulation or PWM. This is used for features like light dimming and fan speed control. The nodes feature onboard diagnostics, so outputs can report shorts and opens. Outputs can be programmed with on and off delays or sequencing, which is used to delay on and off functions from 1 to 8 seconds on some outputs. Sequencing is generally used to reduce the heavy load on the battery system when warning lights are enabled. Load management means outputs can be shed when node voltage gets low. Each I.O. node monitors its own voltage and reports it in levels from 0 to 8. Level 0 means the node is above 12.5 volts, and no shedding occurs. Level 1 is below 12.5 volts. Level 2 is 12.1 volts, level 3 is 11.7 volts. Level 4 is 11.3, level 5 is 10.9, Level 6 is 10.5, level 7 is 10.1, and level 8 is 9.7 volts. At around level 8, nodes will start shutting down due to low voltage. The VMUX system will work on either 12 or 24 volt vehicles. The load shed level voltages are slightly more than double on the 24 volt vehicles. Auto throttle is a feature that can be used to increase engine RPM when voltage gets low. It is very important to include interlocks, such as park brake and neutral, to prevent a runaway situation when auto throttle becomes active. Inputs are programmable, meaning they can be configured to activate with battery plus, or ground. The 6131 VMUX USB field service kit allows customers to connect their Windows-based computer to the VMUX network for either node downloading or network troubleshooting. 
it is a Pelican case that contains the USB transceiver, connection cables, and one-on-one -on -one node adapter cables. It also has a USB stick containing software and drivers, but please check for the newest versions of these files on the AkronBrass.com website. Here are some details about VMUX system components, starting with I.O. nodes. This is a 6000 series Hercules node. It has 24 positive outputs, 16 rated at 13 amps, and 8 rated at 4 amps. Outputs can be enslaved together to create a 26 amp source, if needed. There is a 120 amp overall current limit, so we cannot run all the 13 amp outputs at full capacity. With extensive use of LED lights in modern emergency vehicles, it is unusual to approach that limit. There are two ground outputs, rated at 4 amps. There are 16 digital inputs, programmable for battery or ground. It also has three analog inputs working from 0 to 5 volts. Pulse width modulation can only be utilized on outputs 1, 2, 15, and 16. There is a new version of the 8x16 node. Its new part number is 6030-2000-00. The old 8x16 node is now obsolete. It has 6 digital inputs plus 2 analog inputs, and 16 outputs. 14 of those outputs are positive, with a rating of 13 amps. All positive outputs are PWM capable. It also has two ground outputs rated at 4 amps. The 8x16 node also features a programmable current limit, allowing custom settings to protect lower rated devices and wires. There is a 100 amp overall current limit. Here are the new 8x16 features. A CAN network port was added, that was not present on the earlier version. The housing has been improved for a more waterproof design. This is the first node that will work in either the Class 1, S-Key system, or the Weldon VMUX system. A CAN wrapper feature can be enabled. It converts VMUX commands to CAN-based messages, allowing them to be used in CAN devices, such as the Class 1 UltraView display. The 6060 Hercules High Content node, provides increased I.O. options, as compared to the original Hercules node. It has 28 positive outputs, with an overall current limit of 120 amps. 16 outputs are rated at 13 amps, and 12 are 4 amps. All positive outputs are PWM capable, and like the 8x16 node, they feature a programmable current limit. It has 4 ground outputs rated at 4 amps, 16 digital inputs, programmable for battery or ground, and 4 analog inputs. The high content node has 2 CAM ports, allowing direct connection to CAM based networks, such as J1939 or CAN smart switches. It has a pods port, meaning the high content node can act as a controller for 3 and 4 button switch modules that can be daisy chained together. Pods will be described in more detail later in this video. The high content node also has a USB plug, which can be used for node programming. The 6010 4x12 mini node has a 55 amp overall limit. It has 4 digital inputs, 2 analog inputs, and 12 outputs. The outputs are rated at 7.5 amps and all are PWM capable. Two outputs can be enslaved to create a 15 amp source, but only specific output pairs can be tied together in this way. Output 1 to 6, 2 to 5, 3 to 4, 7 to 12, 8 to 11, and 9 to 10. Other nodes do not have this limitation. The 6020, 16 input node, has 16 digital inputs and no outputs. It would be used in places where several switches need to be connected to the system, such as rocker or compartment switches. The climate control module has inputs and outputs specifically intended for the heat and AC systems. It includes two 25 amp pulse width modulated fan outputs. The climate module is not sealed, so it must always be mounted inside where it is high and dry. This node is pre-configured at the factory for either Fahrenheit or Celsius. The program can be changed by the builder if needed. The 6240 series Vista 4 is an 800 by 480 pixel color display. It comes in three types, standard, standard touch and touch only. The standard display has a plastic housing that features seven legend buttons across the bottom and four buttons on each side. The legend buttons keep the same function no matter what menu is shown, but the side buttons can change function from screen to screen. The standard touch display has the same housing and buttons, but also includes touch screen functionality. The third display type is touch only, which only has touch functionality with no side buttons. There is a pods port on the touch only display that allows a four button and a three button pod switch module to be connected to work as external legend buttons. All Vista 4 displays have four video inputs, 
used for backup or turn signal cameras, or other devices that can provide a video signal. There is no audio on the displays, only video. The touch displays can be used to display and control a GPS device. However, the GPS unit that was used, is no longer available. The manufacturer that supplied them has halted production, and no suitable replacement has been found. The touch-only display, can be panel-mounted, or there are double-din options for several vehicle models. The Vista 4 display features a USB port that can be used to program the display, with a USB stick. Other nodes also can be reprogrammed through the display, through the USB port. Some diagnostic features can be built into the display to aid in system troubleshooting. Short and open circuit diagnostic messages can be displayed, and the display can ping other nodes in the network, to be sure they are connected, and responding. The displays have several ordering options, and those options are built into the part number. From a service standpoint, the most important thing is to check the label, and order the same part if display replacement becomes necessary. The standard displays can be panel mounted, or be attached to a 6-inch swivel arm. When GPS is used, it has communication wires connected to pins 1 and 12, of the 12-pin connector. The video inputs are also sent into that 12-pin connector through a video adapter cable, which is part of the display part number. A 6241 display has no video adapter cable, and a 6242 includes a 6-inch cable. The 6310 PODS controller is used to control a network of 3 or 4 button switch modules that can be daisy-chained together. Up to 16 switch modules can be controlled by each PODS controller on a secondary network called SMUX. The 6060 high content node also has a PODS port, potentially eliminating the need for this controller. Pods should only be used in dry locations, because they are not waterproof. Water intrusion can occur at the seam where the two parts of the switch housing go together. The 6444 series vehicle data recorder, is used to monitor seat positions and to record NFPA required data, which is emergency master, park brake, service brake, ABS events, vehicle speed, engine RPM, throttle percentage, and seat compliance for up to 14 seat positions. Data is saved on a second-by-second -second basis, for up to 100 engine hours. When the memory is full, the VDR will begin to overwrite the oldest data. The VDR doubles as a CAN gateway, allowing communication between the VMUX network and CAN-based networks, such as J1939. The vehicle data recorder and occupant restraint indicator can be used on non-VMUX vehicles. The VDR comes programmed from the factory, with standard models programmed as Node 16, and some specialized VDR models as Node 2. The VDR has a USB interface for configuration and data extraction, and a USB adapter cable is available, part number 0L40-2597-00. Many builders will supply an adapter for easier connection, so a regular printer cable can be used. A VMUX transceiver may also be used to extract VDR data through the VMUX network tab. In order to extract data or set up the VDR configuration, you have to enter the password, which from the factory is lowercase VDR. The 6204, Occupant Restraint Indicator, is a display that shows status of 12 seat positions, designated as seats A through L. It connects directly into the VMUX network, or to the VMUX pins on the VDR, if it is installed on a non-VMUX truck. A gray indicator means off, or no seat or belt detected. Green means compliant, indicating that both the seat and belt signals were received in the correct order. Red is non-compliant, which can be seated and not belted, belted and not seated, or that the signals were received out of order. The seat occupancy signal must always be seen before the belt signal, for compliant indication to occur. A 5-second debounce is used on the seat's occupancy signal, to help prevent nuisance non-compliance faults. If an occupant bounces off of the seat switch on a rough road, no fault will be detected as long as the seat switch signal is received again within 5 seconds. An audible alarm will occur for any non-compliant seat when park brake is released. Seat status can also be shown on a Vista 4 display, eliminating the need for an occupant restraint indicator display, on VMUX equipped vehicles. A commonly reported problem is bad seat sensors. When a seat occupancy signal is lost for more than 5 seconds, the display will indicate non-compliance. The only way to clear that situation is to unbuckle the seat belt and buckle it again. This is because the seat signal must precede the belt signal. When the seat signal gets lost while the seat is buckled, the sequence will be out of order when the seat signal returns. Sometimes the problem is that the seat sensor is out of position, but it is also possible that the seat switch contacts are bad. 
the 6555 GPS unit is no longer available. The manufacturer that supplied them has halted production. It is listed here since there are several trucks out in the field that still have it. The GPS feeds a video signal to a GPS designated video input on the display. Control of the GPS is done through two communication wires, to pins 1 and 12 of the 12-pin connector. Double tap the lower left area of the Vista 4 display, to exit the GPS menu. Other components include the air temperature sensor, which provides a 0 to 5 volt signal, that can be tied into an analog input. The Hall Effect sensor is a clamp-on device, used to monitor battery current. There are two versions available, 300 amps, and 200 amps. The VFD is a vacuum fluorescent display. It has two lines, 20 characters per line. The VFD is controlled by a secondary communication wire from an I.O. node. It is important to note that this is a 5 volt display, not 12 volts. When hooking up a VFD, be careful not to plug the small 3 pin connector in backwards. There can be up to 32 nodes in a VMUX network, and each node has a numerical ID, such as node 1, node 2, node 3 etc. The nodes are blank from factory so they must be programmed on the bench, or outside of the vehicle, before they are installed. Nodes can be reprogrammed in network, as long as only a single invalidated node is connected. There should not be two nodes with the same ID. This problem is usually caused when vehicles have two displays, and a USB stick is used to load the design into those displays. You have to be careful that only the binary file for the specific display is present in the base directory of the USB stick. VMUX is different than a CAM-based network, such as J1939. VMUX is a low-speed network, running at 9600 baud rate. CAN, runs at high speed, usually 250 or 500k baud rate. A VDR, high-content node, or a new 8x16 node, is required to translate from CAN, to VMUX. It's very important that terminating resistors are not used on a VMUX network. They are required on a high-speed CAN, network but they cause problems on the low-speed VMUX network. Here are two waveforms that show what the VMUX communication signals look like on an oscilloscope. The top waveform is a network with resistors. You can see that during off time, the voltage is about 0 volts, and the overall peak-to-peak -peak voltage is smaller than the network without the resistors. The lower waveform shows what the VMUX network should look like with no resistors installed. During the off time, there's about a 2.6 volt bias. The communication chips need this bias in order to communicate properly. It is possible to read this voltage with a voltmeter, but it can change with the number of nodes. Having terminating resistors on the network can cause loss of messages. A common symptom would be where the emergency lights are enabled, and all the warning lights turn on. When disabled, some turn off and others stay on. That means that at least one node missed the message to turn those lights off. Other possible causes of that same symptom, might be water inside one of the three-way splitters, or a single open communication wire somewhere in the network. The network uses Deutsch three-way splitters, and the three pin connectors that plug into the splitters, have either green, orange, or blue wedge locks that are keyed. To keep the network layout organized, ideally the wires with the blue wedge locks will be connected to the trunk line that goes from splitter to splitter, and the green connector from each splitter will drop off to the nodes. Each network should have a 4-pin network tap connector, to allow easy connection of the VMUX transceiver, for diagnostics and downloading. Wilden recommends the use of VMUX network cable that has a blue jacket, which makes it easy to identify and distinguish from J1939 or other networks. The VMUX network cannot be plugged directly into a CAN-based network, or both networks will fail to communicate. The VDR, or another node with a CAN port, must be used to translate messages between the two networks. On the VMUX network, the shield wire should be grounded in only one location. The shield is there to help prevent outside noise sources from affecting the comm wires. It should be connected on pin C, of all the splitters, but not tied into the rest of the nodes. This concludes part 1. Please proceed to video number 2. Thanks for watching.